Who will win the ultimate tech battle between the United States and China? Get ready, because this isn't just about trade. It's a high-stakes global competition. China, for instance, has announced an allocation of $55 billion for science and technology in 2025, a 10% increase from last year with significant portions going towards quantum computing, semiconductors, and AI. So will China emerge victorious and stand tall, or will the US remain on top? Let's find out. All right, let's get into semiconductors first. These tiny chips are the absolute brains behind nearly every piece of tech you use, from your phone to advanced AI. It's no wonder the US and China are locked in a fierce battle over them. The US is throwing a huge $52 billion into making more chips at home with their Chips and Science Act trying to cut reliance on places like Taiwan, which currently churns out a massive 92% of the world's most advanced chips. The catch? It's significantly more expensive to make these chips in the US, sometimes 30 to 40% more than in Taiwan. Even Europe is aiming high, wanting 20% of global chip production by 2030. But they're facing similar hurdles with high energy costs and a shortage of skilled workers. China, on the other hand, is all about self-reliance with its dual circulation strategy, pushing to boost its own tech capabilities. Take Huawei's Ascend 910 AI chips, for instance. Despite US sanctions, they managed to snag 27% of China's AI accelerator market last year. While the US still leads in super cutting edge chips, China is steadily advancing with slightly older but still vital chips, 28 nanometers and up which make up a huge 76% of global chip demand. This isn't just about consumer gadgets either. China's military is integrating domestic AI chips into advanced weaponry, highlighting the critical national security implications. Next up, artificial intelligence. This is where things get really futuristic. Remember when everyone was buzzing about chat GPT? Well, China dropped a bombshell in January 2025 with DeepSeek, their own version of a large language model, which they say cost only 15% of what OpenAI spent. This thing is smart, fluent, and almost human-like. Chinese tech giants like Tencent and Alibaba are already using it everywhere, from manufacturing to customer service. The US is still a powerhouse in basic AI research, with American universities cranking out 58% of the most cited machine learning papers last year. But China is focusing heavily on putting AI to work in real-world situations. Like with their massive network of surveillance cameras, they'll have 2.7 billion by next year. They're building entire AI ecosystems that don't need much from outside their borders. And then there's the whole discussion around how to control AI. The US is pushing for risk-based rules, while China is all about cyber sovereignty. Basically, they want to control data within their own borders. China's Global AI Governance Initiative is even gaining traction in places like Africa and Southeast Asia, with 17 countries signing on. It's a battle not just for who has the best AI, but who sets the global rules for it. Let's talk about how the world connects – telecommunications. For years, Huawei, a Chinese company, has been a major player, especially with 5G. They control a huge chunk of 4G networks in Africa – 70% and Latin America, 41%. Even with the US trying to push their clean network initiatives, only 12% of Huawei's 5G equipment has been removed worldwide. Why? Because Western alternatives are often more than 60% more expensive. That's a huge difference for countries trying to build out their networks. Now the fight is moving to 6G, the next generation of wireless tech. China is pushing hard for global agreement on how the 6 GHz spectrum band should be used for 6G. Experts believe that if Chinese-led 6G standards become the norm, it could cut Huawei's equipment costs by 18 to 25 percent. This would give them a massive advantage and could potentially shut out U.S. companies. If the U.S. doesn't get more involved in these early talks about spectrum, we could end up with two completely separate technological worlds. Just like with 5G, do you ever think about how much your daily life depends on these hidden networks and standards? It's pretty incredible, isn't it? This tech battle isn't just about innovation, it's also about economics. The US recently slapped new tariffs on Chinese goods, from consumer electronics, 20%, to advanced semiconductors and electric vehicles, 
50%. The goal is to slow down China's tech exports. But China isn't sitting still. They're investing heavily in their own AI and cloud computing, which experts predict will keep their tech sector growing by 5.7 to 9.1% despite the tariffs. Beijing is also offering big tax breaks for semiconductor equipment and pumping billions into quantum computing and neuromorphic chip research. China's dual circulation strategy is key here. They're trying to become less dependent on imports for things like semiconductors. They've already cut their dependency from 85% in 2020 to 72% in 2025. At the same time, they're sending more of their tech exports to countries involved in their Belt and Road Initiative. Huawei and Smiasi, a Chinese chipmaker, are even working together to make advanced chips using a combination of older and newer technologies. It shows their determination to be self-reliant. The countries in the Global South, basically developing nations in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, are in a tough spot. They're often reliant on either the US or China for their digital infrastructure, and this can lead to long-term dependencies. For example, Angola's National Fiber Network, which was 85% funded by Huawei, sends 92% of its government data through Chinese cloud servers. This gives Beijing a lot of potential influence through the data agreements and their infrastructure deals. Some countries are trying to play both sides. Turkey, for instance, relies on US chip designs for its defense systems, but has also teamed up with Huawei on 5G infrastructure, getting technology transfers in exchange for market access. India is another interesting case. Their semiconductor strategy, which offers big subsidies for chip factories, has attracted billions in investment from both US and Chinese companies. It's a rare area where the two tech giants are actually investing in the same place. It's a complex dance for these countries trying to get the best tech and investment without getting pulled too far into either side's camp. What would you do if your country was in that position? So, who's going to win this tech battle? It's not a straightforward answer. The US boasts strong innovation, robust financial markets, and key allies, while China leverages its huge scale, state-backed tech mobilization, and global infrastructure exports. Recent US efforts to control chip exports, for example, have sometimes backfired, pushing China even harder towards self-reliance. Emerging tech like quantum computing, where China holds a significant 37% of global patents, and neuromorphic chips could completely shake things up. Ultimately, there might not be one clear winner. Instead, it's about which power can best blend technological strength with sustainable growth and global standard-setting influence. Countries like India, which is part of both the US-led Quad and China-dominated BRIC semiconductor groups, highlight the complex balancing act for nations trying to stay independent. The next decade will likely bring continuous shifts and gains across various tech sectors, shaping a new global tech order. So, what do you think? Are we heading for two distinct tech worlds? Or will competition and connection always coexist? Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.